Hi everyone. I have a fun little experiment today. I'm going to be using this Rainex glass water repellent in fluid art and see what kind of cells we get. I've decided to test it out in three different ways. I'm going to spray it on, I'm going to drip it on, and then I'm going to mix it directly with the acrylic paint mixtures. So let's see what this will do. Test number one. I'm going to spray the Rain-X over the canvas after I've poured it out. Here it is again. I just got it off Amazon. I'm pretty sure it's meant for your car windows, but it's hydrophobic. So I think it might work to create cells. So I have my base layer here, a nice metallic gold, a grayish. I have a beautiful blue. It's a fallow blue. It's one of my favorite shades. I use this all the time. I have black. And then I have a nice lighter turquoise color. And all of these are mixed with Floetrol water and it's Liquitex basic acrylic paint. I mixed it the same ratios as usual. And for this first test, I'm also going to add in just one drop of 100% silicone oil to the metallic gold. I think the reaction of the silicone oil with this water repellent will work to get some gorgeous cells, but I don't want to overdo it. So just one drop in the gold and that is it. Our colors are ready to go. So let's start layering the cup. And I mix these as I always do, about half flow trawl, half acrylic paint, and then water to thin it out a little further. We're going to start off with a little bit of the gold. This is the one that has the silicone oil in. And since I'm doing a flip cup pour, whatever is on the very bottom of the cup is going to end up on the top of the canvas. So I want to make sure you're those color combinations look great and we do get some cells from the gold. And if you don't know what a flip cup pour is, I think it's also called a dirty pour. I'm actually going to take this cup and flip it directly onto the canvas. So I don't use as much of a base layer, which is why I'll also be mixing in some of the base layer to this pour cup, which I normally don't do. I decided for this experiment to try flip cup pour because I find you don't get the super defined lines and shapes. It's a little more muted and that will be a good canvas to test out the rain -X and see what kind of cells it creates without being distracted by a bunch of lines. So I'm trying to fill the cup almost to the top. So I'm going to need a little bit of the base layer here to make that happen. And then when layering, I like to do a mix of dark and light colors. If we do get cells, layering the dark and light together will give us a really good contrast and we'll see nice defined lines within the cells. So there we go. I think we're almost there. I'll add in a bit more of the base and let's get to the fun part, the pour. I'm using a square canvas today. It is 12 by 12 inches. And normally this is the part where I'd pour the base layer on. But again, we're doing things a bit differently here. So I'm just taking the cup. <laughs> of course, I didn't show it on camera, but I just flipped it. And now the cup is on top of the canvas. Before I lift the cup up, I'm just gonna pour the remainder of the base layer on. We'll just spread that out a little bit. And now the paint will be able to glide over the base layer. Just roughly spreading it all around and I'm going to try to get it as close as I can to the cup here. So it can grab onto that base as soon as I lift the cup. And that should just about do it for the base layer. So before I lift the cup, one more step. I'm just going to torch out the bubbles here. There's a few. You can't really see them. They're pretty tiny. But we'll just do a quick little torch. 
and now we're ready to lift the cup and see what it creates. All right, we'll do the ray next after, but for now, there we go. Not a ton of cells. I wasn't expecting a lot of cells. But let's just spread this out. Oh, we got a few in the middle there. And then you can see a lot on the side where I poured the cup really quickly there. I've mentioned it before in my videos, but the faster you pour the paint, the more cells you get. Unfortunately, those beautiful cells are right on the edge. So to cover the canvas, I'm going to have to pour some off, but I'll try to leave at least a little bit. There we go. Oh, there's quite a few cells. So we will see if the Rain-X being sprayed on after will even make a difference. But there we go. All poured. Now just another quick little torch. Get rid of any of those tiny little air bubbles. And now for the fun part. I'm going to spray this rain axe directly on. Let's see what it does. Oh, wow. I was not <laughs> expecting that. Just one spray and the entire canvas is covered in tiny little cells. So this corner is missing a bit. I'm going to spray it twice there. And then I'll also know the difference between one spray and two sprays. So just a little spritz on the edge here. I did spray it. It didn't make a huge difference like the first spray. But I can see the cells are still developing. So I have to give it just a couple minutes here. And then we'll take a closer look. And here we have it, experiment number one of rain -X, where it was sprayed directly on a fresh pour. And these cells are so intricate. When you really get close up, there are so many layers to them. It almost looks like a, a snake skin. I'll try to get as close as I can to an area here so you can see what I mean. They're just amazing, these tiny little cute cells. So I would say experiment one is a success. Let's get on to experiment number two for Rain-X. So experiment number two, I have a slightly bigger canvas. This is 12 by 16. And what I'm going to be doing differently with the Rain-X this time is I'm going to be using a dropper and a toothpick after it's all poured. And we'll see what kind of cells we get then. We're jumping right into the pour, so you don't have to watch me layer a pour cup over and over again. But I did the exact same thing. Floetrol, acrylic paint, water mixtures. I layered it the same way. The only difference is this time, I didn't add any silicone oil. I wanna see if that's gonna make a difference too. So we'll flip it over here. And then we will pour the remainder of the base layer around just like last time. And I did add the base layer to the pour cup as well again. And I'm using a different color palette. Since we're testing out cells here and not testing out a product's vibrancy, I can switch up the color palette and still get fair results. So I have a beautiful dark burgundy and aqua, coral, light blue, and then the white base. And as I'm spreading it here, I think I watered down the base a little bit too much. I wanted to incorporate as much water as I could into the mixture since this is a water repellent. I thought the combo would make great cells. But as I was blending it there, I think it might be a little too liquid, which will dilute the colors. But we will see. Here we go. Yeah, I was right. It's much more pastel colors. Because that base was a little too liquid and it is white, it took away the vibrancy of a lot of the colors. But 
let's give it a chance. It, pastels can be nice too. So it's all poured on. Let's spread it across each corner here. And again, I didn't use any silicone oil and you can see there's a few small cells. I think that's from using Floetrol, but we don't have any big ones. So it's almost a nice blank canvas to test out the rain -X. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's very muted in pastel, but it's going to look a lot different shortly. I'm just doing a little edge check here. Often there's a little bit of the blank canvas peeking through. So while the paint is still wet, I just blend it in. Now we'll do a little torch as usual. Let's see if this opens up any cells. A few tiny ones, but not much. So that should just about do it for the torching. On to the rain -X. So I sprayed a little bit into a plastic cup, not much at all. And now let's see. So I dipped the toothpick in there. Little tiny cells, not as much as I thought. Actually, I'm going to go with the dropper first. So I went and grabbed the dropper because I want to do a line of bigger cells right down the middle. Oh, and that is making much bigger cells. I'm going to kind of try to do the big cells all along the coral there and right up to the top. Oh, that's really interesting too. They're spreading, they're turning quite big. The only thing with the dropper I'm noticing is the shapes aren't perfectly circular. It's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it makes it look almost like cells. Well, they are cells, but you know what I mean, like under a microscope. And I think it's pretty unique. I actually like it. Some of them almost look like flowers. And this is so fun to do. I was planning on not covering the whole canvas, but I know I just can't help myself. I'm going to cover all of it with rain -X. <laughs> All right, next part of the experiment. Let's get a little bit closer. And I'm just dipping the toothpick in the rain -X, and we'll tap it right down. All right, I'm going to try to saturate even more. There we go. This is extremely satisfying to do. And look how awesome these cells look. They're all different colors. The three along the bottom there almost look like eyes. I'm definitely going to be using this rain -X again. It is so much fun. I have tried this toothpick method with 99% uh, isopropyl alcohol before, and it did not make cells like these. All right, I think that's just about enough for the toothpick test. I do want to try one more spray on top of the canvas because that was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, I messed up the camera angle here. And I did spray it on this section, the top corner there, and it didn't make a huge difference. But the other corner when I sprayed it there, you'll see later, the cells are my favorite on the whole canvas. And I missed getting it on video. But this corner, it didn't have as much of an effect for some reason. Let's try a little spray on this corner. There we go. And yeah, that didn't make much of a difference either. But we'll give it a couple minutes because I have noticed with this rain -X, it does take a couple minutes for some of the cells to develop, but like, look at this corner. I'm just obsessed. There's super delicate, tiny cells. And then there's ones that are much, much bigger. And it's all just blending together really well. 
let's do a few more of the drops to get some bigger cells dragging down into this corner. There we go. These ones aren't instant, but if you watch just one of them, you see it does change colors and get a lot larger in size fairly quickly. This is all just so much fun and so cool. I'm hoping you're finding this as fascinating as I am and I'm not just coming off as this crazy person who's having way too much fun with a water repellent. But I love when I discover little things like this in fluid art and try it out for the first time. But that's enough for this canvas. I think I've pretty much covered all of it, if anything, too much. So let's take a closer look at this thing. Here we are. I think it looks really beautiful from afar and even cooler close up. So these cells here were made with the dropper. They have the very loosely defined borders and I think they look amazing. So I love the dropper ones. I also love this side, which was sprayed on. It's such delicate little cells. And I think this little corner that was sprayed is my favorite because they have a perfect tiny black border around all of them. And then right here was the toothpick ones. They got a lot bigger. And there we have it. Experiment two for Rainex is also a success. And now on to our third and final experiment with Rain-X. So this time I'm actually gonna add the Rain-X directly in with my acrylic paint mixtures and see what kind of cells we get. I'm using a dropper and I'm just putting a few drops in all five colors. The aqua color on the right hand side there is going to be the base layer. So I'm not adding it to that, but I used about half a dropper's worth of the Rain-X in the other five colors. And just like silicone, I'm not going to mix it in heavily. So I just mixed it slightly and we're going to get right into the pour because this video is already quite long. I've made two pour cups here and I can already see some cells forming on the top. So we're just going to get right into it. Let's see what this does. And I've gone with a bright turquoise base instead of my usual white because I did notice in the last two Rain-X experiments that my vibrant colors lost a lot of their vibrancy and looked very desaturated and muted. So I just wanted to use a very bright base to see if we can still get vibrant colors with Rain-X. I have no idea why or how a water repellent could decrease the vibrancy of acrylic paint colors, but both previous pores, I was using quite vibrant colors and they turned out very muted. So just an interesting little thing to note with the Rain-X. So I've poured it out and now we're just gonna torch. We're getting a few little cells, nothing too much, but we haven't even spread it yet. And I forgot to torch the base layer beforehand, so I'm just going around the edges and getting all those little air bubbles out. Now we can start to spread this paint. It's going quite slowly, which is not a bad thing. Those cells are maintaining their shape. You can see they're not getting all warped. And we're just going to go corner by corner. So far, the cells are looking pretty comparable to when I use silicone oil. But with silicone oil, I only use a few drops. I used quite a bit more Rain-X. But I made sure not to mix it heavily. That way, you end up with tiny little cells. I wanted to see if this Rain-X could form bigger cells that are perfectly defined, unlike the dropper ones from the previous test. And I'm not sure what is going on with the burgundy color. I mixed it the same way I always do with Floetrol and Liquitex acrylic paint. 
but it doesn't look nearly as vibrant as it usually does. So I'm wondering if the Rain-X had something to do with that. Because this has been three canvases in a row where the colors aren't looking as vibrant. And I will show all three canvases at the end when they're fully dried so you can really see how this Rain-X worked. All right, it is all poured. We have quite a bit of cells, but I'm wondering if we can get even more by torching. Normally with silicone oil, I find the torching expands the size of some of the cells and creates a few more. But as I started to torch these cells, the rain -X cells, I noticed that there is a lot opening up from the torching, a lot more than silicone oil. So I'm actually just going to show a closer look of these cells opening up because I thought it was really cool and it was really fun to do. So here we have one little corner. And you can see as I start to torch lightly over, probably an inch away, there's a lot of little cells opening up. And here we have our little burgundy corner. And as I torch over, you can see a lot of cells opening up and revealing the aqua and blue colors underneath. It's a really nice contrast. And the torch is making quite a difference, a lot more than silicone oil. Look how many cells I've made just by torching over it for a few seconds. Let's check out another area of the canvas here. I'm going to try it over the cream. And there you can see it is so satisfying. It's opening up a bunch of little cells. So I'm going to go ahead and torch the rest of this canvas because it's a lot of fun. And let's take a look at the final piece. And here it is, freshly poured. I will show the dried results of all the experiments next. But for now, let's take a closer look. So I think the cells look great. They're so unique. That one looks like a little eyeball. Actually, a bunch of them look like eyeballs. And there's so many different sizes. We have some really big ones, some nice delicate ones. I think my favorite is this mushroom looking one right here. The one thing I will say is I'm not obsessed with how the color palette turned out. Even though I used the same color palette as the other two experiments, the gold is pulling a lot more on this one, and I think it dulls it out. You can see right here, there's just so much gold. But overall, I am happy with experiment number three, where we mix the rain -X right in. And overall, I think all the experiments were successes. So let's see how they all dried. And here they are, the three rain -X experiment canvases starting with my favorite, which was the spray on. I love how it dried. The cells are so intricate and the whole canvas is perfectly smooth with a nice subtle gloss. And my second favorite, the one that turned out very pastel, but I do like it. It's a good balance, I find. And the cells are also unique. So really happy with that one as well. That was the dropper and toothpick one. And then the third one where the Rain-X was mixed directly in with the acrylic paint mixtures. I love the cells. I do like it a lot. I just don't love the color palette. So my final thoughts on Rain-X. Overall, it's amazing. It's inexpensive. It's so much fun to use. It creates such unique cells. And I think the best part is the canvases dry with no silicone residue. They're perfectly smooth, no cracks, no texture. My only issue would be how some of the colors turned out, but I don't even know if that's because of the rain -X. That is it for this experiment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.